This is a Haas SL30? Haas SL30. What is it you guys did to it? Uh, everything so far. I mean, this motor back here is off of another one that, that didn't work properly. Ah. Uh, and we put it, we took the one off of this and put it on the other one to get it running so the customer could see it and they were happy with it. And they bought it, but I put the bad one on, uh, I don't even have a plug on it. Put the bad one on here and I'm not thinking it's gonna work. No, it doesn't even have a pig tail on it. I got a lot of stuff to do just to power it up. Screwdriver. So you're running power to it right now? Yeah. Power and air. Actually, I'm probably just gonna do power because if it's not working, I'm just gonna turn it off and recommend that we replace that servo. Disconnected before I really even got into it, I looked to make sure again. It's kind of like my second second check you know first i unhook it and i make sure it's unhooked then i look at it again just to make sure these are the boards that control the memory and everything so if something's not hooked up properly if it's not booting up properly it'd be in here That look familiar to you? <laughs> Spit again. Then dip it. Okay. Cool thing about Haas, like you look at, you see all these tags on all these different wires. Like you'll see this one says Mocon P12. It'll actually be going to P12 right there. We have P14 that comes over here and there's a P14 right beside that. Everything's marked and fairly simple. Okay. Uh, see, here's a problem. Look right here at these. These aren't even hooked up. That's probably our problem right there. So I'm going to hook both of these up. That's a good start. And then we'll give it another shot. Oh, look at this. It's a power, power wire that's not even hooked up. See, this is my first time really coming into this one, so I'm like, kind of weirded out as to why these are like this. Okay, now I'm going to pull this door back closed. Perfect. It works. Does it turn on and everything? We're gonna find out in a second. Every time now, I gotta get air to it though. So all that pressure is building. I'm still kind of freaking out. I'm like, how do wires get unplugged? I don't get that.
pressure build up. Hundred and a hundred and twenty psi of air pressure. E stop is off. Low hydraulic pressure. Low hydraulic. What that probably is. I'll watch my gauges as I do it. They're not going up, which tells me I have my phasing backwards. So we're going to turn it off. We'll grab my screwdriver again. Come in here. Do my second check, because I always double check myself when it comes to this electricity. <laughs> I do. I'm bad about it. I mean, it's like... That is like one of the fears. I always think about what what could go wrong. And that tends to keep me safe. So you'll take the red and the black when your phasing is backwards. And I probably could have told beforehand once I started it up, they have a, um, if your phasing is wrong, there will be a red light off to the right. And if it's correct, there'll be a green light to the left. Haas is good enough to do that for you. Most machine, machines don't have that. You have to gauge whether or not the pumps are moving backwards or things like that. Let me tell you something cool I saw at IMTS. They have, Haas was intentionally crashing a mill to show off this new, I guess, new software that they have that will detect the crash and it does a full reverse, like within milliseconds, which may not save your tool, but it will save your spindle, which I think is pretty cool. You're excited? Oh, I'm just cheering the machine on, making it. <laughs> if I'm, if I act like I'm happy, maybe it'll be happy. It'll do what <laughs> I want it to do. Servo is off. Servo is off. Reset it. Low hydraulic. I'm not getting anything on my gauges. See. When they sit for a while, the hydraulics may not want to come up. You just got to keep doing it. I'm not getting any pressure right here though. Because I got a leak. A hydraulic leak. And how do you fix the hydraulic leak? Uh, first you have to figure out where it's coming from. What is actually leaking. And lucky for me, they've already put this panel back on. But you can look down here. Yeah. So someone didn't hook something up. Like they cleaned it here. Okay. How long does the SL30 like does usually take to uh, to repair? Um, I'm trying to think when we actually got the five that we had. Um, if it if you focus on it, it it, it should take about a week. To totally clean it up, uh, go through everything, make sure everything works, and just take care of its needs. Make sure it's happy. So is that what I'm looking at? Yep, that's what I'm looking at. Those gauges up there on the front are not hooked up, which is great. Okay, I gotta take this panel back <laughs> off.
So you're connecting both the chuck and the tailstock. Yep, hydraulic lines. These are just lines that come off the main hydraulic body to feed these gauges so we can know uh, what kind of PSI we have on them. And, and the PSI for the chuck and the tailstock is both adjustable depending on how, like the chuck would be how much clamping pressure you want to clamp down on the part. Tail stock, how hard you want it to come into the part. It's always tougher when you can't see what you're doing. But being a car guy, I'm kind of used to getting into tight spaces and not being able to, you know, only having to feel. Okay, that one started. Let me find a croissant wrench. That's redneck for adjustable wrench. Both of those about 300 PSI. What's up? Let's see. Okay, let's do a power up, see what happens. Door is open. that we replaced has to do with the turret so I'm gonna have to look into it to see if that is not functioning properly. Okay. Uh, turret off. Turret off. The launch turret has not seated itself properly. There may be something obstructing the turret between the housing and the turret itself. All right. Have fun today. Thank you.